I'm Russ Heaps, and today I'm in northwest Montana. I'm at Flathead Lake, um, which is near uh, Big, I Big Fork. Big Fork. I could, yeah, you'd, I like, should be able to remember Big Fork, and it's and it's something bay. Actually, in Woods Bay. Woods Bay. We're actually in Woods Bay. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, near Big Fork, which is near Kalispell. And the Which hip bone's connected to the thigh bone. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're here. Uh, I'm with a bunch of my fraternity brothers. Uh, these are guys that uh, we've known each other for 46, 47 years, whatever it's been. We graduated in 1973 from Wittenberg University. Uh, we're all members of um, Phi Gamma Delta, Fiji's. And uh, we get together every year or two and uh, drink and tell each other lies. Um, although I do most of the lie telling these days because <laughs> they're too old and married and stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, this is Rick, this is Randy, uh, this is Bruce, and uh, these are the guys that uh, I hang with who are real brown alcohol drinkers. Uh, whiskeys and bourbons and uh, and occasionally I'm not going to mention any names but scotches uh, so we just thought we'd sit down and, and everybody brought a bourbon with them and uh, we're going to talk about uh, bourbon so it Rick is up with Blanton's well and I'm glad to have the privilege to talk about it because it's uh, it the original single barrel uh, bourbon uh, it's iconic uh, made at the Buffalo Trace Distillery. Uh, interesting history, uh, Colonel Albert Blanton, <coughs> we'll do a little history first. Colonel Albert Blanton was born in 1881 to one of the first families of bourbon. Uh, in 1921, he became president of the distillery and was president until 1952. He expanded it from 44 warehouses to 144 warehouses. Uh, and so <clears throat> it had this <coughs> tremendous run during his tenure. And as a master distiller, in the course of that uh, time as, as president, uh, <clears throat> he developed uh, Blanton's uh, in Warehouse H, uh, which apparently, <clears throat> I think, Russ, you say that there's there's a great differential to the warehouses and where it's placed and I think he discovered in this particular warehouse at a certain level in <coughs> in the, whatever floor it was on in the center of the warehouse that he could create this distinctive single barrel bourbon and uh, <coughs> today it has become very popular uh, and in some places it's it's hard to get in, uh, in a lot of places, it's hard to get. There are yeah. times during the year you can't get it. And, and fortunately, in, in northwest Montana, where I now live, there's still a supply. Uh, it's, it's made even more distinctive by this octagonal bottle, uh, which has a pewter uh, racehorse on top, uh, since it's a Kentucky bourbon. And if you drink enough of this, you can get <coughs> enough of these racehorses in different positions from the starting gate to the finish line, and it will spell Blanton's. There's a little letter on each one of the, the, wow. the stoppers. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. So that's, a, that's a little piece of trivia that probably see, not learn, too many people know. You learn stuff here. You learn stuff here. <laughs> so, uh, how many letters are in <coughs> Blanton? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Research. Uh, <laughs> Research. <laughs> so, let's try eight. Uh, hey. So this is a sobriety test also, <laughs> since we've had a couple other tastes before we got to Blanton's. Uh, but uh, it, it's, a, it's a really fun, kind of whimsical fact. And uh, having talked about the history in the bottle, I think we need to have a sip. I couldn't agree more. Now when you say single barrel, Rick, can you explain what that process means versus well, something a lot of, else? A lot of bourbons are blended, so they're mixing uh, from one barrel to another to get a certain mixture and consistency. <coughs> and with Blanton's, it's made in a single barrel. And it's uh, in the warehouse. It's there for a lot of <coughs> years. The barrels are progressively either moved or turned. 
and you might start out with 100% liquid in the barrel, and by the time this is bottled, it's down to maybe 30% 30, 30 rust, or? I don't know. That, seems, that sounds low to me, but people keep telling me, yes, that's, that's about the number, so. <clears throat> so it makes it a, certainly more expensive, a bit more rare, um, and also reduces the quantity. And, you know, the interesting bourbon has become very popular in this day, day and age. It's popular overseas as well as in the States. And so just think about producing bourbon and trying to anticipate what your demand is going to be 10, 12 mm -hmm. years down the road. <coughs> right. So, right. you know, how do you make enough of it? Is it going to have the quality that you were accustomed to? Uh, you're, you're basically hoping for the best. And if you develop a reputation like this has, the likelihood is it's going to sell into the future. Right. So the bourbon itself, <clears throat> you know, is I I've always enjoyed it. It's probably my favorite. I would I would. Uh, I'm going to need a little more of this. <laughs> and, and it's and it's going. Let Let me just tell you, he's been hiding this bottle for the last six days. <laughs> Everybody else brought stuff, and it's been drink uh, This has been hidden. So while He's talking and he can't do anything about it. I'm going to have a little more. But we had to have enough for this for this show. Oh, we have enough. Okay. So that that being said, it's it. I would always describe it as smooth. Uh, it has. Uh, <clears throat> it's known for nutmeg spices uh, in the taste. It's got some vanilla. Uh, you you may pick up uh, a, a a little taste of the corn uh, in the uh, in the blend. I. I get a lot of vanilla, I get a little nutmeg, uh, but you know, a lot of bourbons are what I would call like wines, they're front forward. So you taste a wine and you immediately get a taste of something followed by other things. Right. Uh, you seem to be running a little low there, Paul. <laughs> so, this, I, this I would say has front forward vanilla. Uh, and then tell me what you guys think and what else you're picking up. I haven't found the nutmeg yet. But I'm not a big nutmeg. Car guy. Caramel. It also has caramel in it. Are you getting caramel? You mean caramel? That too. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that like ketchup and ketchup? Mm hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Or tomato or tomato. Sometimes I can smell it better than I can taste it. Because I can smell some of what you're talking about, but once it hits the tongue. Now it's that I've opened this up, I can tell this stuff's going to go fast. It may not last through the segment. <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about finishes. Because some of the bourbons, they say, well, I have a long, smooth finish. What's a finish in a bourbon? It's sort, of, it's sort of the taste that's left on the back of your tongue when it's all over with. And, um, you know, there's no hard <coughs> set rule to, to how it should be. In my, one of the reasons I don't like uh, the uber alcoholic or alcohol uh, like Knob Creek and Booker's and some of those is because I don't get a finish from them. All I get is that alcohol kind of burn. Mm. Um, and it may be that I just have a uh, layman's palate. Um, but, you know, I like, I like milder, softer bourbons where I can get the whole, that whole spectrum. And the finish is that la very last thing you get at the back of your tongue as it's as it's going going past. Well, it's definitely smooth, and it doesn't have <clears throat> it doesn't have the peppery finish that you'll get from a rye. Right, that's right. for sure. Right, right. Would right. you consider this toasty <coughs> on the finish? That's a good. Yes, I would. Now that you mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Good. We're getting there. Good. Jeez, well, we're not we're not the uh, incompetent lugs I thought we were. Well, as you get older, your tastes become a little more sophisticated. So I guess that's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's what's <laughs> happened. <laughs> but that's kind of the difference from a uh, because my wife drinks bourbon, but she drinks Jack Daniels, which is sort of the entry level bourbon that most people do. But that's right. not a bourbon. Oh, it's a whiskey. It's yeah. a Tennessee whiskey. So it's. Not considered a bourbon because of, is it the mash bill plus the way they filter it? They fil it's charcoal filtered, so it's not considered a bourbon. Well, and the main, <coughs> main thing about, uh, 
excuse, excuse <laughs> me, about bourbons is uh, the percentage of corn. They have to have, it's, it's got to be primarily made with corn, and I... It has to, the mash bill has to be at least 51% corn okay. to be a bourbon. So um, it does, but it doesn't have to be in Kentucky. It right. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be distilled in Kentucky, which is why uh, we did one of these segments on uh, on a Texas bourbon. Woodford Reserve is is Jack Daniel's Kentucky bourbon arm. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Woodford Reserve mm -hmm. is owned by Jack Daniel's, and uh, yeah, it's not technically. It's not. I don't think it is a bourbon, but but it's you know close enough, and people do it. Uh, drink it as as a bourbon, and it's marketed as a bourbon. So. Are, is Buffalo Trace part of a conglomerate now? Do you know? I don't <laughs> think so. Which is unique because a lot yeah. of these distilleries have been. Bought I, up. I I I could be wrong, but you know Buffalo Trace. Um, it, it's really they've got such a healthy portfolio of bourbons. It's Eagle Rare. Uh, it's Buffalo Trace. It's Blanton's. Uh, it's the Weller. All the different Wellers. Yeah, uh, Pappy Van Winkle, Ancient Age, uh, and on and on and on. It's just, it's sort of a who's who of bourbon. If you were only going to go to one distillery and buy bourbon, you know, those guys could take care of pretty much, you know, the A to Z of, of bourbons because they really have a lot of, of different things. So, Rick, what's the price point of this particular <coughs> bourbon? Price, price point's probably, I think I, I looked at it recently on, on the web, 53 to 60 dollars uh, would be the price point for Blanton's. Uh, so <clears throat> it's not on the inexpensive end. It's still if you if you want a high quality bourbon in your closet, it's a great <coughs> price point for something that you can drink and really enjoy. It's not something you want to mix with anything. So you 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 purchased that at what price point? Uh, it, it's 50 50 to 60 dollars. Well, because. In Ohio, anytime I've seen blends, it's normally in the eighty to ninety dollar range. So. so well, and so that's interesting <coughs> too because you know you're you're back east near Kentucky. Uh, there's such a demand for it that may help control their supply and demand. And I'm out here in Northwest Montana, so it may be another reason for you guys to move here. <laughs> I, I really didn't need another reason, but but uh, we got it. Well, guys, if that's it. Um, Thanks for, for uh, kicking in and, and uh, being part of this panel. And uh, that'll wrap up this segment of Beer to Whiskey. And here's to Blanton's. Here's to Blanton's.